Good afternoon and welcome to the Gordon Tafe Oval in Geelong for the Geelong District Football League for season 2007 and the grand final between Inverley and Bell Post Hill. Welcome to Channel 31 viewers and also live and exclusive on 94.7 The Pulse this afternoon. And Jason Doherty with you. Fantastic to have you along and we're looking forward to what should be a great game between two of the top three sides for most of the season. And as always, we have our beautiful commentary team assembled in the box. A little bit different for us today. Normally we're facing this way, but for Channel 31 to start with, we're, uh, we're live and we're looking forward to it. Uh, on my left, Dale Smith. Good afternoon to you, Dale. Yeah, good afternoon, Jason. And uh, looking forward to it. As I said, uh, slept through all the rain last night. Never heard a drop. So it's uh, amazing to come out here today and see the ground in pretty good nick. Yes, we'll talk weather conditions shortly. Also joining us, I normally go to the other end, but we'll start here. The man who's uh, got the suit on, he's been doing some uh, other dignitary, doing some other things with dignitaries today, but uh, he's in the commentary box as always, Alex Tagani. Hello, Alex. Hello, Jason. Um, we want to thank uh, Peter Dacos, our guest speaker, for coming here at the GDFL. But the bigger, big announcement, Jason, we presented our tipping champion for uh, <laughs> season 2017. So, Dale, well done. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Great victory to be celebrated. And the man at the end of the uh, commentary box, and the man that, oh, I tell you what, where is a light with this man being live and exclusive on TV this afternoon, Richard Grubby Cations. Hello, Grub. Yeah, g'day, Jace. G'day, viewers. And I can finally you can say, say viewers. g'day, viewers. I've said it all year. <laughs> g'day to the boys up in King Lake. I know Nathan, all the boys are listening, all the boys in Werribee. We never got a drop of rain in Werribee last night. Balmy evening. 28 man. degrees 26, again. 26, <laughs> 26. <laughs> The cup that they're playing for is in between Alex and uh, and Grubby there. That is the uh, yeah, is the Buckley's it? Cup, and that's what they're playing for. And uh, well, is it the Buckley's or the Smiths Holden? What, what which one is it this year? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. The Smiths Holden. Oh, the Smiths Holden. Holden. That's it. The Smiths Holden Cup, and it's. Uh, well, at Grubby, it's going to be interesting to find out uh, whether it's going to be Bell Post Hill who are playing in a record 10th grand final in a row or uh, Inverley who haven't done it for 25 years. Well, what an amazing ever. Actually, probably the best place for this is right yeah, there. <laughs> so we can't see this idiot in the suit. This idiot's come to the wrong place. But <laughs> no, look, it's amazing ever. 10 years in a row, six out of the last seven. Inverley, well, they're coming in for their first. I think they might have won a... A, not a premiership in Division 2 way yep. back in the 90s, but this is the main stuff for them. Look, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a cracker. The second semi was an absolute beauty with only a, a point separating at the end of the day. Injury injury problems maybe for Inverley. We don't know. They're being pretty tight-lipped in the Inverley rooms. I spoke to, to Macca. He's, he won't give me an inch, Macca, but Jack Kennedy Hunt, we're not sure of. Hutchie should be all right. Uh, young Muir spent the last half on the bench last week, so if they're all right to go, gee, it'll be a good game. If not, it's a big ground. It takes no prisoners this ground, boys. And also, uh, Alex, I suppose that's the thing. Inverley has been awash with the fact they're in the grand final for the yep. first time in 25 years. Some uh, some good publicity for the town over the last day or so. Uh, for, and, and I'd say the whole of Inverley's here. Well, I, I think Neville just said on this uh, network on Thursday night, if you want to rob their house, you go to Inverley at 2 o'clock. <laughs> we do not condone that as a league, but what we do condone is the fact that, well, the streets of Inverley will be empty. Grubby, this is their big moment. First grand final in 25 years, as we said. First since I've been on this planet, boys. So it's a big one. <laughs> but like you said, Macca, he's got a few roughies, cloud injuries. I've even heard late mail that Casey Meehan, who had a quiet game in the preliminary final, has a bit of shin plimp. Uh, shin splint problems right now. Yeah, so, so that's slowly, mate. Yeah, I know. You've got him, you've got Hutchison, Kennedy, Hunt. There are quite a few uh, maybes, but they're just warming up behind us for those at the game watching on the big screen in the club room. So have a look for yourselves, and we're in for a ripper, boys. Dale, you've uh, coached the team. You coached in Belay a few years ago, and you know a lot of the boys. How do you think they'll be going today uh, You know, for their first grand final? A lot of these kids have played in uh, a lot of junior grand finals, yep. Jason, at this ground. So they'll yep. know it, and they've had a fair bit of senior experience now. So I don't think it'll uh, phase them too much. It's probably more the older blokes get more nervous than the younger blokes. They just go out there and go about their business pretty well. But as you said, the injury concerns may be a bit of a factor, but look, you know, you know Hutchie steps over across the line, he's going to give you 110%. You know Jack Kennedy Hunt's going to be one of those players that he'll play through anything to play in a grand final and uh, hasn't played footy for a while, so he'll make the most of his opportunities. And as, as for the other guys too, they'll want to play and uh, these opportunities don't turn up too often and you probably feel for Rusty Ruan Gerard after last week he's going to miss out in the grand final he would have taken 18 weeks next year I reckon if he could have played today so uh, as I said they'll be playing for him as well so it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting game of footy Smitty the camera's over here mate sorry mate I know, you <laughs> I know you've got a great head for radio you told me that <laughs> you told me that not only once earlier, and by it. the way I don't know about not condoning you can this probably put the cup down can I put it down yeah, oh, yeah, right. probably I don't down. know about uh, condoning all that because of the streets of Inverley where do you reckon all my mates are at the minute <laughs> 
You haven't got any mates. Hey, no, All two I'm, of them. I'm going to have a few new TVs by the end of the day. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. And, uh, and and for Bell Post Hill, Alex, you know, an amazing run. Mm. Ten grand finals in a row is just, uh, you know, it's unheard of in modern day sport, really. So yep. they've done it, and, and they've just won the reserves as well. Uh, so they've got their seniors and the reserves in the grand final. It's an amazing effort by the club. Exactly. So 42 Bell Post Hill players have reached the Premiership dais since their first victory in 2010. But of course, as Jason said, they first made the grand final in 2008, and they have not looked back since on grand final day. Two blokes that have been in every grand final, Shane Limer and uh, Fantella. Adrian Fantella. How do we think they're going to go today, boys? Well, oh. he, he's my choice for uh, BOG this afternoon. If they, uh, Who, Fantella? Win. Fantella, yeah. yeah. He's one of my favourite players going around. I just reckon he's a good accumulator of the ball. He doesn't waste opportunities, so I'd expect him to have a fairly big play in today for the uh, Bell Post Hill side to win. Weather conditions are probably going to play a little bit of a park grub. There, uh, there was, a, well, from what we heard, about uh, 6.30 or 7 o'clock this morning, there was an inch of rain on the ground. Yeah, so well, it's drained amazingly, but it looks a bit soft. It is. I, I went across the other side, went down a lap and come across the middle, and I tell you what, it's very soft and slippery out of the side. It's not too bad this side, so maybe they might play this side of the game and make it a bit easier for us to see it from this side. But uh, as I say, on the other side of the ground, very wet, very slippery. We're going to see blokes. They'll have to have the long stops in because they'll be falling over everywhere, I, I would think. It's very, very wet on the other side. I can imagine that they're both sides out there, they'd have a lot of long stops in their gear, in their gear too, Grub. Probably not one set would be available. No, that's something. right. They're yeah. like grass cats on. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, yeah. they're going to be falling over then, I can tell you, because it is bloody yeah, slippery. As I said, I, I don't think there'll be too many with the old the old long spots out there to start eight. What, uh, and Dale, I suppose the thing was, the selection news, I suppose, for Bell Post Hill was that there was a, a discussion around Justin Tarr and whether he would come back in the team. He's played in numerous grand final victories for the for the side. He's, he's struggled with some injury this year. He's not in the team today. It might actually turn out to be okay with the way the ground is. Well, as I said, uh, it was just interesting just talking to a couple of people during the week. They were really wrapped with Liam Merrick last week and what he's been able to provide to Bell Post Hill as that backup ruckman for uh, Ren Lovett. So it'll be interesting again. He's been used uh, pretty well during the game and he's one of those young kids that, that can jump. He can use the ball. So uh, I think it's a bonus to have him in. Probably a little bit more mobile than Tari, but, gee, when you go back and you look at experience in grand finals, you can't go past, just past Justin Tarr and I'd probably... Myself, I probably would have had to try and sneak him in there somehow. I don't know who you leave out. Would have been very hard to do something, but uh, uh, they, they've shown a bit of faith in what presented to them two weeks ago. Well, I think two of their main players down there are young Etridge and Cozzy, Nick Costello. And I just think with Tari, not going to take a lot of marks, Tari, but the way he pushes the ball down to their advantage, I reckon they play better when Tari plays. But obviously Brad Martin knows a little bit more than us. Maybe Tari's not quite fit enough for this big ground because even though you're a centre-half forward or a full forward, you still have to do a bit of running on this ground. Blokes run off you, you've got to chase them, and that's probably why they've left him out. But I just think Etridge and Costello do play better when he's there, creates a bit of a pack for them and puts the ball to their advantage. Dale Inverley for preliminary finals, the first time they've got to the major dance. Do you think Do you think they actually might be a little bit more settled because they've got over that, what we were calling a bit of a hoodoo, I suppose, that, that they couldn't get to the grand final day, that they might be a little bit more relaxed going into the game? Or how do you reckon the nerves will go? Oh, look, you reckon they'll be pretty nervous? I, I think they will be. Yeah. As I said, like, you don't get an opportunity to play in grand finals too often. But the good thing is, as I said before, Jase, the, the kids have played in grand finals out here. They know what to experience, and and obviously, by looking at the crowd this afternoon, that that will be something that might give them a little bit of stage fright <laughs> because there hasn't been this many people at it's the final massive. For, for some it's time. It's massive. And, and Grubby's even made mention earlier on the uh, junior game also had a number of people around here watching the juniors. So. And to get a park around here, if you're going to do it, I advise you not to. Just jump in a bus, jump in a taxi. And Uber. Get yeah, grab an Uber, whatever you can do. Because, as I said, I got out here and had to do 15 laps before I could find a car park. I went back to Buckley's. A couple of the key matchups this afternoon. Obviously, the one that we're going to talk about, Alex, is Jack Kennedy Hunt against Cam Addy. Yep. The best full fullback and the best full forward in the competition. It's going to be pretty. Uh, it's going to be a pretty special day, I think. Yeah, they've met once, Jason, this year. Of course, Jack Kennedy Hunt didn't play in the second semi final. So when they met, uh, I think it was round eleven, round thirteen. Jack Kennedy Hunt finishes with eighteen touches, kicks three goals, five. I know a few people said he got ten scoring shots on radio this morning. That's inaccurate. Three, five. Two of those goals were free kicks as well. Mm. We tend to forget that as a commentary team. So he realistically scored one goal in play against Cam Addy, who some people say is past his prime. I, 
I tend to uh, I tend to disagree, but we we all have our right to our own opinion. So look, it'll be a great matchup, and then you got the second one in Barton and from Belpost to take who won the medal last year on Dalton Grundale, unless he goes to Casey Meehan. I'm not sure, Dale. Uh, no, I'm not too sure what they'll do there, but I, the fact will be, I think with that first matchup you're talking about, Jason, yeah. is if Cam Manny plays his normal role and he runs down the ground and gets Jack to chase him a fair bit, and if he has got that slight injury, that's going to be the testing thing. But if he allows Jack Kennedy Hunt just to sit in the goal square and lead when he has to, I think that might be a defining moment because I think that will suit Jack Kennedy Hunt more than it will Cam Addy. So if I was Cam Addy and I was playing on him today, I'd be taking every opportunity to get down the ground and make him chase and make him do some work. Just on Jack Kennedy Hunt, for those viewers joining our league for the first time this year, 107 goals in 15 games. It, it is or, or 15 or 16 games. It is quite the feat. First time we've seen anyone do that for Inverley in probably the 100-year history of the club. And the Whitley medal to and boot. And the Whitley medal as well. The best and fairest yeah. for the league, so it's a fair effort. The yeah. other matchup, Grubby, that uh, is probably going to hopefully define it is Hybens, James Hybens, mm. and also Ren Lovett in the ruck. Well, you would think so, and normally I'd talk about it for a fair while, but over the course of the finals, I don't think the ruck would have had anything to do with the finals so far, right from the first final four weeks ago till today. I think, obviously, we know that uh, the big fella... Uh, Love it will win the tap outs, you would think. Although, with the spring in his step, Jimmy might you know, tackle him early. Whereas uh, Jimmy Hybens will do a lot around the ground, you would hope. But he hasn't been doing that much around the ground. I think it's a no contest. I honestly reckon the matchup is who is Bell Post Hill up forward going to put on Michael Best? We've seen Michael Best just continually run out the half back line, you know, go down, put it forward, they kick goals, and I think they've got to put a defensive forward on him. I don't know who that will be. We can go through that if you like, Would but you they have to do it. What about Willie Willy Urquhart? Because he really now hasn't got a matchup well, in, the, in their defensive Exactly, game. exactly. And even so, like all those forwards that they said in the paper, mean they're all too tall for Willie anyway, so maybe that might be a good idea. But Best has been killing them off the half back line. I've tipped him for the for the medal, and I just hope Mac is not listening to this because, well, sorry, uh, Brad Martin's not listening to it. He might put someone on it and cost me the medal because he's been the best player of the finals. Don't worry about that. I was going to give uh, Alex 30 seconds to talk about his favourite player at Inverley, but you beat me to the punch, Michael Best. No. He, had a, he had a great game last week, didn't he, no Alex? favourites. 27 disposals last week, two goals in the last quarter, and the week before that, 28 disposals, three goals for the game, two in the final quarter there. So if scores are level, I'll make the prediction right now at the final break. Watch Mike Best. He's a former champion uh, tennis player in <laughs> Australian merit fields and all that sort of stuff. Because I know we've got a lot of tennis viewers on this network. But watch Mike Best. Number 25. Can't go wrong. What's he going to do? Demonst tennis yeah, demonstration? Yeah, endurance, he's endurance. He's going to serve one through. <laughs> exactly. Serve it straight through the big stick. You are a peanut. <laughs> That's Absolute a nice grubby. Peanut. That's very nice grub. Check it. He, uh, he probably took four or five weeks to get going in the league, but yeah. after that, and when he played in the league, he was he was off and running then, wasn't he? And I'll put my hand up and say I question his, um, well, his selection in the interleague side. I hadn't seen Inverley at that stage, but he wasn't named in the best players. I listened to you guys commentate Anzac Day. I didn't hear his name that often. Often, and then he won the Daryl Jones medal as best player in our interleague side, Centr uh, who were victorious over North Central in Wedderburn. So, uh, yeah, it was quite the story, but there's still one more chapter to go, and that's this afternoon's grand final. Well, there is, but every every uh, story has a, has a bad thing to it. And, of course, the co-captain of Inverley won't be playing today. No, no Ryan, Ryan uh, Gerard was suspended during the week for... Uh, yes. Uh, uh, a hit last week on, on Jack Broman yeah, from Bannockburn. And, and look, don't get me wrong, he deserved the suspension and he, and he shouldn't be playing. But gee, I, I just take it so hard because that kid, I've watched him play for all, nearly all of his 160 games, yep. never been reported. He's not that type of kid. We all do something stupid sooner or later on a football field. And he happened to do it last week in the preliminary. So, look, mate, bad luck, but come back next year and have another crack at it. There's always a heartache story somewhere along the line. There lines, always mate. is, mate. There always is. All right, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll have a look at some of the other key matchups in the grand final this afternoon. And we're going to have the first bounce. We're not uh, too far away from the 2017 Geelong District Football League grand final. You are watching it live and exclusive on Channel 31. Back after this. Mitch Miller. So Fred goes to a break too now. Yep. Yeah. Right on. You're on a break all day. How'd you enjoy your lunch, Freddie? <laughs> now I'd like to call on the captain of Belfast Hill Reserve side, Joel Washington, number 54. 
Mm. We're live on Facebook, boys. Fantastic. That means a lot that to me. That means so much Check to us all. that off the bucket list. Yeah, yeah. live <laughs> on Facebook. Fantastic. Can you tape that? Huh? Can you tape it? No. Oh, it'll be there it'll forever. It'll be there forever, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I might need it. <laughs> oh, Oh, Jesus. Are they going to tell us when we're coming back? Yeah. You'd hope so. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble if he doesn't. Ten seconds, Fred. Welcome back to the Geelong District Football League Grand Final Live and Exclusive on Channel 31 this afternoon. It's Bell, Post Hill and Inverlee at the Gordon Tafe Oval. Looking forward to what should be a great clash. We've just seen Bell, Post Hill win the reserves. Buckley's Cup for season 2017. They've had a pretty good history too, Alex, uh, the reserves at Bell, Post Hill. When the seniors uh, have been doing well, so, so have the reserves. Very handy. Of course, in uh, 2012, they did get up. They had a few handy senior personnel there <laughs> to contribute. And of course, today, I, again, I haven't been able to watch too much of the game, but Travis Furslin, I think he adds another medal to that ongoing cabinet, and uh, well, Justin Tarr, who was Tarr out as there well. as well. Absolutely. So that's five senior premierships for him, and a reserves flag now as well. Well done to him. Uh, we've seen over the years, there's always seems to be one or two players that uh, you look at the team sheet and you go, we don't think they're going to be a dominant force. You, you think they're going to play their role, and all of a sudden they break out and they have a day a day out on the grand final. I hark back to Jamie Pyle a few years ago for Bell Post. Oh, don't he, start when that. he kicked Jeez. seven or eight. <laughs> but kicked about ten. But there's always seems to be somebody who you don't quite expect who will stand up in the grand final and possibly prove the difference. It happens, Jason. Yeah. We've seen it here yeah. before on a number yeah. of occasions. So it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see where that comes from today. You know, Lukey Turner, a couple of weeks back when uh, we saw him uh, they play, play Bannockburn in a home and away round, Lukey Turner stepped up that day. And while it wasn't, uh, it was only a three or four goals that he did kick for the game, yeah. it was just the way he went about getting those goals. So would, I wouldn't be surprised if it's someone like a, a Robbie Logue today that uh, we know that can take the uh, good grab in the forward line um, and really set things alive because he has been pretty good for Invalid during the course of the season. And I suppose along with the two Grozzers, uh, Mick and uh, Dan, they, Dan always seems to find Mick and Mick then sort of comes to Robbie Lake. So they, they spend a bit of time together, so it might be something that they've had in common for some time. So expect Mick Groz to play a big part too because he was very, very clean two weeks ago with his ball work and uh, he could be a, another X factor. I'll have to agree with you on that because I reckon the main game away from finals in the GDFL is the Anzac Day clash between Bannockburn and Inverley every year. It's a big game. It's a big crowd. It's a one-off because it's during the week, obviously. And I reckon Robbie Lowe got two Anzac medals to his name. So he has proven that he can perform in the big stuff. I was just going to say, 31 disposals for Robbie Logue last week, nine marks. Is he the most underrated player of the final series? Because we always highlight best Mays, the Grosdenovsky. I think the thing is that both sides seem to be fairly even across the board, don't they, Dale? Yeah. I mean, they, they don't, they, I know they have some match winners, but they don't always seem to have one or two blokes who just, I know, take mm. Kennedy Hunt out and probably Hutchinson, but the rest are quite, you know, Parrott, Logue, Mays. They've got a, a, like a sprinkling yeah. of six or eight 
who seem to play pretty well every day, every game. That's going to be the difference, I think, today, because we know Bell Post Hill, when one of their two or their players are down a little bit, yep. everyone else around them seems to lift. That will be the difference for Inverleigh today. They've got to find those one or two players. If a Hutchie doesn't have a day out, if a Jack Kennedy Hunt doesn't have a day out, then they've got to find those two or three players that will just step up and add that little bit more to their game to make sure that they're competitive right through. Bell Post Hill, as we know, they don't panic, they don't change the way they play their game of football, and they've done that for a number of years now, but no one's been able to un- undo them I suppose, if that's the word, to, uh, to pick them apart and win a game of football because they will be at you right to the very end. Inverley, on the other hand, if they have 15 minutes of uh, time where they have a downtime, that's where Bell Post 2 will pounce and that could be the difference in the game. Grubby, they nearly did it in the second semi though, didn't they? They came from nowhere in Valley and Bell Post 2 was just able to uh, hold them out, but it was, uh, it was a close run thing, wasn't it? It was, and it changed the whole complexion of the finals mm. to my mind. I, I, when, once they hit the front, Balpo's Hill is still in it. They get another one. They're 10 points up. And I thought, geez, they're gone here. They didn't lose the momentum, though. Balpo's Hill took it back off them. They held the ball. They did this little chip kicking that they've done for the last 10 years. And that's what's got them in the grand finals. They didn't hurry it. Time was running out. But they didn't just go hell for leather the goals. They picked their mark. They got the two goals they needed. Obviously, they had a couple of chances. I think Hutchie missed one from a long way out. Casey Meehan on the run. You know, a couple of those. Had they have got that over the line, then they get the rest. And I think they would have been hot favourites to win from there. But now, Balpo's Hill have had the rest and they've just had to come and do it the hard way. And again, the injury queries on some of these blokes. If if they're OK, we're in for a cracker. If not, Balpo's Hill hold the initiative for mine. The uh, We've always talked about the ground and the size of the ground. A couple of players who want to highlight, and, and one I know that you know very well, Jake Barlow and Dalton Grundle. On this size ground, Grubby, where you need a sort of a, a lead up forward, they're going to be really important for, for their respective teams. Oh, my word, because you, you need that bloke in the middle. You can't just get it out of the centre and hit your full forward like they probably do week in, week out on the smaller grounds. Mm. Not so much Bell Post Hill, but when you go out to Bannockburn and Inverleigh, the grounds are a lot smaller. So you can hit your full forward out of the middle. Not so easy here, and that's why they have to. But if you have a look at that, Jake Barlow has had two really, really good years in his competition, and I reckon the only time he's been beaten is on the bloke that he's probably going to get today. And that's uh, Walsh. Nick Walsh. Walsh yeah. has had a fantastic record on on Jake Barlow. And Tim Barton has had a fantastic record in finals. So it may be the difference if one of them centre-half forwards can get on top and the other doesn't. That might be the difference in the end to the final result. They could switch those two because they have done it before. Barlow to centre-half yeah. back and Barton, Barton to centre-half forward. Well, they have done. You asked the bloke who wrote. Who, who writes in the Addy? Oh, Jake Barlow, a wonderful centre half back. Oh, down he goes. He's a centre half forward. Was that you? That wasn't me. That wasn't me. <laughs> one, one player, Dale, that um, is probably very much in the Justin Tar mold, and he probably is due for a, a bit of a, a, an outstanding game, is, is Joel Page. Yeah, he came in. He did the right thing, Joel Page, this year. He didn't come in until about round 14 or 15. Which, as he uh, does, as well, they do, some you, of them. Yeah, and as I said, <laughs> Rob Wood's another one yeah. we expected to run out today, but he couldn't quite get up for the game. Rob, but, uh, he had to get it in there somewhere. Yeah, no, you know, got to get a little chuck in there somewhere along the line. But look, it is. It's a, it's a factor that he's been pretty well held along most of the final series. Um, we know he's a good leader, lead-up player at the ball. We know he's got a good pair of hands. And if he starts to stick one or two of those early, then he could be that extra third tall, or actually third forward, um, with Costello and Etridge to, and along that full forward line, which provides three really good options going mm. forward. So mm. the the uh, the Inverley defence is going to have to be right on their mark. But they've got the players down there to cover these blokes up. Jackie Fowler's been good, a young kid, but keeps improving. Um, you know, you've got, we've talked about Winicky Walsh back there, Best back there, Groz is back there. So they, they have been there for a long time, some of those players, and they, they'll make a difference. And I think that's the thing, too. We always have spoken over many years about the Bell Post Hill back line, Grubby, and about the fact that they're, you know, very settled. You've got Limer and you've got Addy and you've got a few others. But Inverlees is pretty settled, too. It oh, has been for the yeah. year with Walsh and, and Filet and, Gro- and Dan Groz and a few others down there. Yeah, well, that's, that's who I was going to ask. I might even have to go for the Dame oh, Edders. Put the Dame Edders. I'll have to go for the Dame Edders. the Dame Edders now. That's fantastic. Yeah, who are they? Filet. Now, who does Filet go to? Does he go down to Costello? I think he'll start. I think he Costello. probably have to, aren't you? You reckon? Yeah. Yep. Because I just had a look at some of these backs. They're going to be very hard to match up on down there because they've got a small back line, as we said. But, like, Addy will obviously go to, to, to Kennedy Hunt. Who goes to me and if he's down there? Atula Sulix? Possibly. Oh, Possibly. Maybe yeah. Danny Gray. Danny Gray. Yeah. D- Danny Gray. Well, that's what I thought. And if you have a look at some of these blokes, I can't read it even through me, Dame Edna's, but <laughs> I think their defence has got a little bit more depth to it. 
with yep. I, I just think blokes like you know they've got their back six in the paper which I go on which is Perrot De Blasio Dan Gros Bess Walsh and Filet Ben Mo- Bowman can go down there Curtis Young can go down there Nankerville can go down there and run with someone down there they're not so deep at at, at Belpo's too. They can put blokes down there, but that's more Robin Peter to pay Paul. So I reckon the defence depth is in, in Valise's favour. Well, you know what I'd say to that? I look at the seven defenders that were picked in our team of the year. Four of them were from Belpo's too. So that shows how strong their back mm. line is as well. Yeah. The, uh, the other one too is Jack Yates. Will he pick up Hutchie? What's the deal there? Or who, who, who he's going to run with for, for Belpo's till today against Inverley? Well, I, I would put him on Hutchie. And he has to thump him a bit. And, you know. <laughs> Within, uh, Blake would like that, well, I suspect. Yeah, yeah, give fi- a, it'll get him fired yeah, up. Actually, yeah, I, give I, him a free... It's probably some one Blake you don't want to do did, that. I want to do that, because he'll get... Uh, yeah, no, I don't he'll, mean with no, the fists. No, he plays better. But no, I just no, mean same. getting him, t- down him, putting yeah. him to the ground, keep yeah. doing it and doing it. Hutchie's missed a lot of football as well. And to run around on this big ground's hard enough. But to keep running around and keep getting flattened after flattened when you've got the football, it takes a lot out of you. And if it's close, they want blokes like Hutchie in the last quarter to be absolutely buggered and can't go any further. Uh, he, he'll drive it. He'll, and I think that's what you it. said, Dale, about the 110% as soon as he steps out. I mean, he's had some injury concerns, yep. but he's come back. You wouldn't know it, would you, after watching him last week? No, nah, no. Nah, he was, well, he, he was uh, going to push through it anyway. He's just a, a, around the ball contest. He's one of the strongest players in the league, I would think, and, and without a shadow of a doubt. He's able to get in and out of contest. He's so quick, and he's, uh, he just takes that little side step when he moves out of a contest, and he's a great user of the football. So if uh, he emerged from the middle of the ground today, I reckon Kennedy Hunt's going to be on the march, and he's going to be straight up the ground. But so. the thing is, in the last couple of weeks, for the first half of the game, they've pretty much preserved him a little bit up the forward line, haven't they? So he can come home strong. They've, they've done that. They can't do that today. No, well, they, they can't grab you right. And having said that, as I said, they probably sent him back to get him and build him up that little bit of fitness over the yeah. last couple of weeks. I can't imagine him being a hard worker on the training track. It actually just doesn't ring that, that no. way. But no. You train harder than Jimmy Ibens. Well, he probably yeah. does. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. When he, when he comes out here, it's a completely chalk and cheese situation because yeah. he just goes and goes and goes. And, and you'll know that the 30-minute uh, mark of the last quarter, he'll be still cracking in, to having to, making sure they get over the line. So. And it's an inter- interesting dynamic, too, now that they've got a second ruckman in the Invalid team. So for yeah. a lot of the season, they didn't have one. No. Hamish Bennett's come in. Grundle now not playing in the ruck as much, if, if not any. And Bennett's coming in, you know, against Lovett, they, they obviously think that they might need that. That's a that's a bonus for them, mm. not having to use Dalton Grundle, yeah. because I think I would rather see, actually Dalton Grundle's a young kid that I would love to see start in the middle of the ground at the start of the game, because he's a kid that once he gets his hand on the ball, bits a bit of confidence, he's up and running. So, and he's pretty important to the way they play their game of football, because he can go in again ruck, he can go in there and ruck rave and change with Hutchie if he needs to, and they can spill their forward line around with me and coming to centre half forward. So he does provide a few more options for them. So he, he plays an important cog, as we said. You said him and Bolo both play very important cogs for, for both part sides this afternoon. Yeah, well, that's why they play it at centre half forward. So I'd prefer to see Dalton not bother going into the middle. It's good that Bennett's in there because I think he's a forward. When you go forward and you go into the ruck and then you go around down the back line, the kid's only 22, young Dalton. He looks older and he plays a lot older than it, but he's only 22 and he's still development. I'd leave him at centre half forward. Unless Barton gets the better of him, then you might have to make a different switch, but I'd leave him there and see if he can dominate proceedings. Yeah, I still reckon that for that, for him especially, and probably even maybe a Casey Mean for those two to get their hands on the ball early. And I think Stevie J made comment to someone uh, on the television a couple of weeks back. Get in, touch the ball, get a feel of it, and then you you sort of feel, well, it takes all the pressure off you to actually go and get the ball. Because, well, you know, you watch players, they go out, they go out, they keep fumbling, keep fumbling. But as soon as they get a clean contest, it's amazing how their game changes. Well, well like, you're right. Yeah. Sorry, Alex, you're right. I have to agree. You'd know more about them because you're one of the sack. I mean, they're one of the coaches out there. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Well, I haven't been sacked for Valpo <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'd use Tom Stewart for Geelong as an example last night. A few clangers in that first quarter, and then you saw that second or third quarter, he just broke through half of uh, Sydney's forward line. It was something special, and I guess we'll just give him credit being a Geelong boy of this region. All right, well, umpires are out on the ground, and so are in Belpost Bell Post Hill won't be far away. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the first quarter of the 2017 Geelong District Football League Grand Final. You're watching it live and exclusive on Channel 31 and 94.7 The Pulse, and we'll be back after this break. I thought, I thought we were on 44. I told him we were on 44. Yeah, it's, it, no, it's, it's, it's we called are. Channel 31, it's but same. it's on 44. It's Gravity introduce his team, the umpires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. 
Is that wait up here now? Yep. Yep. You can relax. I just made an executive decision. There, yeah, finish there. We've had enough of your head. <laughs> the Dame Edna's live. Does this mean we don't go inside at half time or uh, what's gonna happen at half time? Don't know. Ronnie, Ronnie just sent you a message. You look like a crim on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I look like his lawyer sitting next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's his court appearance. <laughs> uh, we'll take no further questions. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> hey. Yeah, just stay out there anyway. Yeah, that's fine. Then I'll come back to nah. the I made an executive decision. We sat there looking like stars, star balls of something. We sat there sit, sitting there looking like star balls for long enough. So I, I can only suck in that <laughs> long. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> A minute to go, Freddie. It's the emblem of the team we love, the team of the red and the blue. Every heart beats true for the red and the blue. 30 seconds to last, 30 seconds to last. Hey, I don't know. Bell Post, who died? I don't know. Thanks, yeah. mate. 15 to go, Fred. And welcome back to the Gordon Tafe Oval. It is uh, 2017 Jetty FL Grand Final Day this afternoon. You can see on screen the Inverley players waiting for the start of the pre-match activities, including the National Anthem. Bell Post Hill coming across as well. And the umpires there also. I tell you what, Jay. Thank God they get, got rid of the, you three roughheads off that tally too. We uh, hey. we got some feedback too. Yeah, we got Ronnie some, Pilgrim. Uh, Ronnie Pilgrim, Bannockburn great. Said it looked like you were going for a court appearance with your lawyer next <laughs> yeah. year, which was well, good. Boys, one we got rid of our faces, but one thing we've added is a bit of rain now. So we got a sprinkling on the ground just in time for the national anthem. We'll see if we have a slug this afternoon. Dale, it wouldn't be a grand final day for the GDFL without a bit of rain, a bit of wind and a bit of sun. Well, uh, mate, we get everything here on a grand final day. And, uh, We've seen some interesting ones, we, haven't we? We just need Grubby to go through his team this afternoon, the umpires. Yes, the umpires, yes. Uh, You're the chairman of the umpires. Yeah. Uh, All his friends are out there. Yeah. Westy. Westy. Yes. Westy's Nar umpire. Nachos. 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 We love Nachos. And Josh James, I think he's a local copper. <laughs> Umpires like one too. <laughs> <laughs> Tells everybody off. <laughs> now, they'll, they'll do a good job, these boys. They've been around for a long, long time. And they'll do a good job. And if they don't, we'll surely tell you so very, very quickly. Good to see Nachos here. He's probably yeah. been the outstanding umpire of the season, hasn't he? When we've seen him, he's, and he's umpired some big games. I think he might have had Anzac Day yeah, the day we did. had him there. Yeah, he did. I spoke to Steve Keaton, the, one of the bosses of the umpires this morning, and we chatted about his decision-making. I think he's the best umpire for decision-making. A little bit lazy sometimes, and this is Steve Keaton's words, not mine, <laughs> Nachos. But no, he's decision-making. With three umpires, that doesn't matter so much. You can get to the contest. So I reckon Nachos, he's decision-making is as good as I've seen in the competition. Well, you can see on screen there the cup that we had in the commentary box earlier is out there now being played for this afternoon, the Smiths Holden Cup. I think I left my wallet in it. <laughs> well, they wouldn't have to worry. I have a dollar or two in it <laughs> probably. $3.50. Don't forget to send your massive uh, invoice into Channel 31 for your commentary oh, duties yeah. today, Grubby. Oh, yeah. That, <laughs> that might send them broke. <laughs> Again. $3.55, <laughs> and that's not an hour either. So uh, both teams, as we said, lining up for the national anthem. And we said rain coming across. The wind is uh, is up at the moment. And, and at the northern or Geelong end, or Geelong city end of the Gordon Tafe Oval will have that breeze. We've got a problem here. Have we? Do we keep talking? Yeah, of course. Yeah. We have to. The tally's all right, but the poor people listen to the radio. <laughs> Bad listening. We'll just try and give them a little bit of colour as well as a little bit of commentary at the same time. And uh, just a shout-out to Madge Anderton, our netball manager, who's doing the umbrella duties. If you uh, just look to the camera now, <laughs> all the viewers at home can... I couldn't see you. I thought you were no, not singing. No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's a, yeah, it's a tough day to sing the national anthem. 
with the weather. Well, I'll tell you what, thank God it's not Dick Philpot again. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Few bandages on a few uh, invalid players' yeah. legs. Casey Mayan. Jimmy Hyman's has chucked up like a mummy every week, well, so that's yeah, not yeah, that him. Just his normal. Jack Kennedy Hunt with the calf. And get ready for the raw. Wonderful rendition. Yep. Well Wonderful done. Good rendition. Start. Phil Potts out of business now. Yeah. <laughs> he has been for a long, long, a long time. time. Have a look at this crowd. This is the biggest crowd I've ever seen here. It's, it's massive. It's a shame this rain's going to come in and ruin it. Oh, that, that won't worry It'll, be gone, stay it'll there. be gone in a couple of minutes. Hey? You know that. Look at Keisho. He's as nervous as hell. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we said. Got the some first, late news for us, mate. The first time in 25 <laughs> years they're in the grand final. All the best. Yeah. Great, for the, uh, great for the town and great for the footy club. And as you, as you would have read in the Geelong Advertiser, if you're local today, they uh, they were basically they were they were gone for a few years, weren't they? They were, they had to be brought back from the dead, pretty much as a club. Uh, Lee Districts beforehand, and then came back as in the Lee Dale. And it's pretty hard to get back. Jason, it's pretty hard you know, to get back and, once you go, isn't it? So oh, you've got to start. Done an amazing scratch. effort to Actually, come back. To be honest, if a club went back now, where they couldn't do it because they couldn't come back unless they had all their locals come back after a couple of years, because if, if you're trying to bring in players to play, you're going to be coming in with what four and five pointers. So it would absolutely be uh, yeah, absolutely. You'd need, you'd yeah, need I don't think, to come I, back in. Though, I, I, I don't think the way the way Neville and his committee have run the show with Buckley's and all that. Financially, I don't think you'll see sides going. I think they're all pretty well financial. Only, I don't know, maybe what you're talking about with people leave, but I think financially, most clubs are pretty good in this in this league. Just, oh, that, there's no doubt about that, Grub. But as I said, that's, that, that would be the thing. 25 years ago, or whatever it was, it was 96 or something, I think, when they went down, wasn't it, I think? Or... Yeah, yeah, I think it was 95, 96, What's when, they, when, when, they, when, they, when they folded. Ceased, when they folded. Oh, in really, 95, yeah. Yeah, 95, yeah. yeah. yeah no, so to get yeah. back... And to have a look at a set of great junior base probably all the way yeah. through. And if you look through their side today, you know, you've got uh, probably uh, probably close to 15 players that have actually come out of their junior side. It's a fair effort, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, Justin de Blasio has won the toss, boys. So Inverley will be kicking to the left of your screen. But look, my final words before we start this season is that it's been a great season. We haven't had any winless teams and we haven't had any undefeated teams. So I say those are the two ticks you want for a competitive competition. And, and you're just about guaranteed, Grubby, that you're going to get a close game between these two sides. Well, I think what, <laughs> five points a few weeks ago, a point last week. And I tell you what, with the, the advent of coming on TV, oh, geez, I hope it's another close one. And, <laughs> and, and this league is displayed. All right, there's some better leagues around, obviously, when you look at VFL football on the tally and the AFL football. But this is grassroots. This is country football. And I tell you what, the, the, the actual class isn't up there, but the spirit's there. And hopefully we put on a great display today. And whoever takes the cup, good luck to them. And I think, Dale, I think everybody around the ground and uh, watching as well would probably think that these are the two best teams in the league. Nobody has come from fourth or nobody's come from fifth or you know has, has got a lucky break with weather or anything like that. They're, they are the two teams probably that you you thought Bannockburn? Yeah, I thought Bannockburn are up with them. I thought they were a little bit unlucky. They lost Broman early. Well, Watts was a big yeah. one. Lost Wattsy just before the, the, the series started. Yeah, oh, look, I, I think there was three, and whoever was the one to miss out was very unlucky. So I think Bannockburn, and, and when you talk next year, I don't think they have to add much, Bannockburn. I think they're there with them. And it was just, obviously, you can only have two sides in a grand final. But I reckon they were close. Fast start, Dale. Fast start, Fast very, start important. very important. Yeah, look, yeah. Oh, scoreboard pressure. Not so much. I, I suppose a bit like Geelong last night. You don't want them to get too far in front of you. As I said, if it's Inverley jump out to three or four goals, Bell Post still won't worry him. If it happens to go the other way, then I, I just don't know. As long as Inverley can still show that composure, they need to just uh, play their game and just work themselves back in because you've still got a long way to go in the game. It only means a goal a quarter you've got to get back. But as long as they can keep that mentality going, it would be good. Look, as I said, for 95% of the, the good people in Inverley, I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be a change in the cup this afternoon. <laughs> but I can't deny that Belpo still are a very, very good side and you wouldn't begrudge them winning it again. Yeah, well, yeah, I, go, I don't go along with that at all. I, I don't care if Inverley haven't won one in a million years and Belpo still have won 30. The best team will win and they deserve it. And that will be, Grubby? I'm going to go Belpo still, um, only because the winner of the tipping contest did. <laughs> Didn't you? So you must know <laughs> something. <laughs> Even though he only won by a couple and I've made a few blues early. <laughs> but, look, I, I was on Inverley all year. I thought they were the most talented list in the competition. I know Belpo still are the best team. They play better as a team than anyone else. 
it all it all fell apart for me in the second semi. As I said before, Inverley, they had them beat. They lost. Not so much the game itself, but they lost the rest. I think Bannock, uh, Bell Post Hill, that day when they came off, they were buggered. And they really, really needed the rest. And that's why I'm going to go. I think I've called in the record for extra time. A draw yep. and extra time. Did you put that in the I record? I put in one point. That's close enough. Uh, 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 oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Uh, 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 oh. Why would you get an imbecile to do it next there year? You, you know, what you, can, you, you know where, what you can do with your tipping next year? <laughs> I think I can say, but we can't say it on national TV. Well, I so I'll uh, add on to the tips. run out of toilet paper, mate. I'll add on to the tips. Just a check in the record. I went with Bellpost Hill by 10 points. And How would you again, know? Someone might have wrecked it. Maybe. <laughs> oh, touchy. It's a bit of an even spread across the, yeah, the tipsters, yeah. isn't it, between so, the two, which I, I think says I mean, speaks, these, doesn't These it? are just useless stats that are, to help us fill time. Inverley, 47% of the votes to Bellpost Hill, 53%. For the, for the record this year, Inverley's won 18 games, lost two, and might I add, both of those game defeats were by a point. Bellpost Hill, 17 wins, one draw and two losses. Whitley medal votes. Inverley finished with 99, Bellpost Hill with 88. And, of course, last time these sides played, it was Bellpost Hill by a point, but Inverley didn't have Jack Kennedy hunt. I'll go with the Panthers. Remember last year, boys, same conditions as this, and the Panthers kicked the last 10 goals of the grand final. So I don't think they'll do that today, but they should do enough to hold on. We know, Dale, that if Inverley do win the grand final, they've... They've done it, done it the way, done it the way they need to, don't they? And they've beaten the bet, you know. They've beaten the team that That's they it. have to beat. Well, I think we, I think we all of us well, read from the start of the year that uh, that once we saw probably half a dozen games, there was only three teams in it, and we all said that the team that won the grand final would have to beat Belpo still. So it's uh, it's come to fruition. And I think we're not too far away from the from the mark there. Belpo still in their final huddle at the northern end of the ground. Inverley have have broken from their final huddle. And you can see Bell Post still there on screen, and there's the Inverley midfield. They're starting in the middle, or we're going to start in the wing. Well, I was going to say there's a few in the middle there for Inverley, so uh, we'll, we'll Mason, see where they Mason all go. Definitely go to the wing. To the wing, and you'd, you'd think Drew would too, wouldn't you? Well, we got six defenders back here already, so Mick Ros will go to the wing, I reckon, and you'll have Mays and Geordie Drew in there, I reckon, as a starting starting lot. We'll get the boys to. Um, have a look around at some matchups and see whether they have come to fruition as we spoke about in the pre-match. Jason, you've been commentating this league for 22 years. Oof. Thanks for reminding That's me. That's all right. Since the year I was born, what I had. <laughs> you, watch, you, you watch, you'll do thanks, it properly one day. Yeah. But I'll, get, I'll, I'll get good at it one day. Yeah. Yeah. 15 years ago, if we were to tell you that, you know, you'd be covering Inverley, who at the time were defunct, versus Belpast Hill, who again... What did you say? Defunct. Defunct. Oh... Yeah. <laughs> No, I wouldn't have believed you. Exactly. No, I wouldn't have believed you. So Especially is... Bell Post Hill. They were, they, were, they were forever going to win a grand final. Mm. And uh, now they've been in 10 straight. It's a, an amazing effort. And in Valley, absolutely. Like, it's just been, you know. And it's been a, a gradual thing. That's the thing. Mm. To play in four prelims. We used to love going out in Valley. You think you win by 20 goals. Yeah. They were down. But well, I tell you what, times do change. Boys, and good luck Costello must be 